Time for the closing arguments in the medical marijuana debate. It will be on the ballot on Tuesday. Supporting the cause is David Couch. He is the leader of the Arkansas Medical Marijuana Amendment. Opposing is Dr. Greg Bledsoe, the state's Surgeon General. Gentlemen, thank you both for being here. Thanks for having us. Thank you. David, you worked so hard to get this on the ballot. I'm going to let you go first and tell people in your closing argument, why should they vote for medical marijuana? Well, the main reason is, is in 2012, we came so close. And during that debate and from the time between 2012 and 2016, mm -hmm. we listened to the people of the state of Arkansas. We made changes in 2012 to address all the concerns. We took out the Grow Your Own. We have a, a limited number of conditions. Uh, and a limited regulatory scheme that is in place. So, you know, first of all, it's to get medicine to people that we believe need it. And so we've set up, I think, a real good regulatory scheme to get it done. All right, Greg Bledsoe, why should people vote against issue six? Well, you know, I, I appreciate the opportunity to, to answer, um, David. And, you know, we've gone around the state and we've talked to a lot of people about this. And the fact of the matter is, is that this isn't about patient care. This isn't about medicine. Marijuana is not medicine. There are compounds within the plant that can be helped uh, or can help some patients, but marijuana of the plant shouldn't be thought of as a medicine. Ultimately, this is about money. It's about people with deep pockets who are out of state who are set up to profit off the backs of Arkansans. And the fact of the matter is, is that you, know, you can take care of patients, just take the money that they've invested in the marijuana campaign and give it to Children's Hospital or give it to UAMS or give it to one of the wonderful charities that we have in our state. But the fact is, is that this isn't about patient care. This isn't about medicine. This is about uh, profiteering and uh, and I'm very much opposed to it. I'll give you a 30 second rebuttal there. Very easy. Every uh, <laughs> cultivation facility and every dispensary in the state of Arkansas has to be owned by an Arkansan. Uh, this is uh, written by Arkansans with input from Arkansan and funded by Arkansan. Nobody from out of state has a thing to do with this. All right. You want to counter what he has to say? Well, it does appear that there are people who are actually funding this campaign who are outside the state. Well, does that and necessarily mean that they are uh, going to profit from it? Well, if you look at the national picture, yeah, they are. Uh, there's a national narrative that's going on. There are people on the west coast that are driving this and the ultimate reason they're driving it is there's big bucks in it seven billion dollars is the legal marijuana industry uh, revenue for 2016 it's projected to reach 40 billion if all 50 states legalize it this is about big bucks it's about profiteering and it's about uh, using our state and bilking it and then leaving people like school teachers and law enforcement and good hard working moms and dads to pick up the pieces. You guys have been on the circuit together for uh, several months now. <laughs> lately. Yeah. Actually, you guys get along pretty well. I need our uh, uh, viewers at home, listeners on the radio to hear that and understand that. I mean, very collegial. Yeah. Uh, kind of what, what do you think you guys have kind of learned from each other through the course of this? Have your positions changed some? Have you guys taught each other or learned something from each other in the course of this debate? Well, I'll just say this, you know, there is so much vitriol in our political discussion these days. I mean, you look at the national picture and it looks like people hate each other who are on each side. And what this has really taught me and I think illustrated is that you don't have to be disagreeable in order to disagree. I mean, David and I get along very well. We just, you know, look at this issue very differently. And I think it's a good example of how we should approach our politics. You can disagree. But you don't have to be disagreeable. You don't have to be hateful. And I agree with him 100 percent and, and win or lose either way. Uh, if six passes, I will work with him to make it uh, as good or better than it can be. And if six loses, they have a bill and I will work with them to make that bill as good as it can be. So we think that the, the end result is, is going to be helpful for the state of Arkansas. Yeah. What, what is going to be your, uh, David just outlined what he would do mm -hmm. if it passes. He outlined what he'd do if it fails. What are you going to do if it if it passes? Well, I'm, I'm the advocate for patients and for people in the state of Arkansas regarding health care issues. So whether it passes or it fails, I'll still be doing that role and working every way I can to make sure that if it does pass, that we have the regulations in place to protect people and make sure they have the information that they need to make a reasonable decision. And if it fails, again, we've got Representative Douglas has a bill specifically for CBD cannabidiol, uh, which would be for patients. And uh, I would sit down with David and others and try to come up with a bill that's reasonable, safe, and helps patients in the future. Do you, so if it fails, you're going to work with the legislature cooperatively on that measure that was floated out sure. there. You don't think you'll come back in two years or four years with another measure? I don't think that would stop us from coming back in two years <laughs> or four years with another. It'd probably be four years because these don't do very well other than in the presidential election years. All right. Both of you, last question for you both. Do you think it's inevitable that medical marijuana is going to be not just the law of the state of Arkansas at some point in time. When you look at the demographics mm -hmm. and how this uh, issue is affected, is it possible that it, it just eventually it's going to happen because of the demographics? I think it's likely. I don't think it's inevitable. You know, things can change. Public opinion can change very quickly. It just takes a few, uh, you know, big cases or 
or big media events to sway public opinion significantly one way or the other. Uh, if you look at the demographics, it's likely it's going to head that direction, but I'm not going to say it's inevitable. Yeah. I think it probably is going to be inevitable, and I think in this election there are several other states that have not only medical marijuana on the ballot, but uh, recreational marijuana ballot. I think that the policies are going to change, that it, it is inev inevitable at some point in time. All right. It looks like it's a tight race. I wish the best okay. of luck to both Thanks. of you, and I thank you both for the civility My that pleasure. you've operated sure. in this, uh, this uh, debate. Thank you very much. All right. All right. Greg Bledsoe, David Couch. Appreciate it. And thank you for watching. Don't forget to vote on or before Tuesday. It is your civic duty. We will be also broadcasting from about 6.30 p.m. until the final returns are in on election night in conjunction with KETV Channel 7 and their entire crew. You can catch myself and our panel of analysts, including Rex Nelson, Dustin McDaniel, Ann Clemmer, and Frank Scott. Catch us on KETV.com or talkbusiness.net. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.